Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is not going to be about Dudley. It's all about the Elder Wand. Now, we are no strangers to the Elder Wand. We all know what it's about, and we all know how powerful it can be. But the question I want to ask and hopefully answer today is, why does the Elder Wand betray its owners, even the powerful ones? I think there's so much more to this wand, and it's entirely unique for a reason. So stay with me as I get to the bottom of why the wand seems to have an issue with loyalty. Keep watching and enjoy. Before today's video begins, I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about today's sponsor, Audible. When it comes to sponsors, I never recommend anything that I don't believe would be beneficial for you all. And since my entire YouTube channel is based on a book series, well, you're probably starting to see why I'm so happy to team up with such an awesome company. Everyone, I have used Audible for years, literally years, and I could not be happier about recommending this app. Many of you are aware I'm in the middle of launching a new vampire-based YouTube channel, so my chosen audiobook for this month is Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice, which comes after my last audiobook, The Vampire Lestat. It's amazing to hear both Lestat and Louis' different takes on the same situation. If you haven't read any of Anne Rice's work, please do. Now, with that being said, guys, the app isn't just audiobooks. The Audible app has podcasts, wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you will not find anywhere else. Guys, it's everything you love to listen to all in one app. You have a playlist for life. Trust me, there will be no regrets if you take my advice and choose to download this app. Now, Audible are so confident that you'll find something you love that they want to give you an incredible deal today. Audible wants you to have 30 days free on them. Try it out. See how you feel. There's nothing to lose and only listening convenience to gain. To avail of your offer, you can click the link in the description below or go to your web browser and type in audible.com forward slash HP folklore. That's audible.com forward slash HP folklore. Or simply text HP folklore to 500 500. Three different quick ways to get your trial now. Let me know what audiobook you choose in the comment section below. Download Audible now. Welcome back guys, let's get this video up and running. I almost feel like I'm telling you exactly what you already know when I say that the Elder Wand is truly like no other because it's such common knowledge amongst Harry Potter fans. But for the purpose of this video, I just don't want to leave anything out, especially as it contributes towards my overall point. Anyway, the wand seeks a powerful owner. It's picky, choosy, as if it has standards. Now this all comes back to one lore itself, and as I said in my Voldemort wand video, one lore is such a grey area. It's as if wands think for themselves, but then, how could a magical object think for itself? It makes little sense. Then you can imagine Ollivander popping his head out of nowhere and saying, that's the beauty of wand lore, so much to discover, or something like that. JK Rowling likes to leave a lot to the imagination. In my opinion, maybe too much. There's so many doors left open in Harry Potter in terms of things we want to know, but I think many of us have accepted that we're just not going to get the answers that we want, in more areas than one. Anyway, an important part of understanding the magic and uniqueness behind the wand is actually understanding the materials it's made of. Everyone thinks it's the core that makes it so special, but let's just talk about the wood for a moment. In many ancient legends, the elder tree is magical and symbolizes good health and prosperity. Most famously, elder has been treasured for its medicinal uses for thousands of years. It's believed to be a curative for more than 70 diseases, ranging from the plague to a toothache. So, Elderwood has always been believed to be magical. Now, insert that into the Harry Potter universe, where myths, where reality, and you've got yourself a wood with actual magical properties. None of the other woods used to make ones were ever considered magical. It was always the core that decided what type of obedience the wand would have. So, if we pair that, with the Thestral tail hair, 
a core that's been said to have been near impossible to work with and only been used in one wand, the Elder Wand itself, then you've got a very, very exceptional pairing and this is where the wand's sort of personality comes from. The magic from the Elder Wood amplifies the power of the core, making the wand more alert, more sensitive and more attracted to power. It does choose a wizard, yes, but its standards are much higher than any other wand due to the fact it has two magical power sources, not one. That's why it's the most powerful wand in the world, that's why it has a power like no other and that is why the wand can not only pick and choose its owner but also when and how it moves on to the next one. To date the wand has had over 14 different owners and has left a bloody trail in its wake. It's best known as one of the Deathly Hallows. Now the legend is that Death itself created the wand, which is a fabrication from the tales of Beetle the Bard. The wand was actually created by Antioch Peverell, an incredibly talented inventor who somehow managed to fuse the Thestral Tail Hair core with Elder Wood. Probably the biggest, most notable difference between the Elder Wand and a regular wand is that while a regular wand seeks a connection with the chosen wizard, the Elder Wand only seeks an individual of power. It has certain expectations. It still seems weird talking about wands like they have feelings or opinions, but anyway, let's just take a brief look at these expectations or standards. Now, for starters, the wand can identify the power of any wizard that comes into contact with it, and it will not yield to an individual who does not possess the level of power that it requires. Now, the wand has been with powerful individuals in the past, and it's been with not so powerful individuals. But it's important to note that the wand is fair in its assessment. It must always be held by the most powerful and the most worthy. That is what makes it such a special wand, and this is why it betrays its owners. So let's expand on this more and look at the wand's betrayal in more detail. So here's the deal with the Elder Wand, here's how its master power works and here's why it changes allegiance from even the most powerful of wizards. The Elder Wand has standards, as I've said. In order to unlock its full power, the wizard must meet these standards. Its yield may be won, but its loyalty must be earned. The user must show a consistent display of power and a will and want to be better. What do I mean by this? Well, let me continue and explain. The wand can sense the potential of power in its owner, and it can also sense it in its opponent too. If a wizard who wields the wand comes across a more powerful opponent, the wand withdraws its legendary power, testing its current owner to win on his or her own merit of skill alone. If he wins, the wand's power is now unlocked once again. If he loses, then the right wizard has won and the allegiance changes. It makes sense to me anyway, and it's quite obvious in the case of Grindelwald vs Dumbledore. Grindelwald has used the Elder Wand for some time, over 20 years if I'm correct. It became quite loyal to him as he performed extraordinary magic with it, and those of whom he jeweled were no match for its power. However, when he jeweled Dumbledore, the wand's true power was no longer available as it sensed Dumbledore's power. It forced Grindelwald to duel on his own merit without the wand's advantage on a level playing field and that is how Dumbledore actually defeated him. Grindelwald failed to live up to the wand's demands. Dumbledore then held on to the wand for over 50 years. There was no wizard more powerful to challenge him that would cause the wand to retract its true power. That was until he dueled Voldemort in the atrium. Dumbledore fought on his own merit. He fought on his own skill level with a wand. No advantage, no nothing and passed the wand's test of earning its power. This doesn't happen every time, only when the wand senses an opponent of similar or greater power. Although Draco disarmed him and won the wand, Dumbledore did not raise it to duel. The wand would have quickly betrayed Draco the moment it came across a wizard who had more potential than him, which is why it switched so quickly, easily and unusually as it did to Harry. 
The only reason it would not unlock its power for Voldemort to exploit is because it was not taken fairly from Harry, which is the wand's basic rule. It could sense all the power within Voldemort, but it would always resist him until he took the wand fairly. Not even fairly, just took it directly. What's worse is that he tried to use the wand to kill its owner, something the Elder Wand would not tolerate, and why it actually reflected the killing curse back on Voldemort himself. The truth behind the Elder Wand betraying its owners is that it does think for itself. It's the prime example of the greyness of wand lore, that a wand itself can determine what is good enough to earn its obedience and what isn't. I just want to briefly refocus on the fact that the wand's core is amplified by the wood and core both having magical properties, which is the true reason the wand is as unique as it's made out to be. It was not created by death, it was just a genius piece of science from Antioch Peverell. With that being said guys, that is all for today's video on why the Elder Wand betrays its owners. I think I made some pretty good points, but as usual, I need you to let me know in the comments section below, is there any other reason why you think the Elder Wand betrays its owners? Don't be shy, let me know. Thank you so much guys, and I will see you all in the next video.